Day seven, we are totally becalmed. Tig is sleeping below. Um, I had to take down the head sail at around three or four in the morning. And I put a double reef in the main because it just makes it flog less and protects the sail, but left the main up to give us some sort of stability and mild steerage. But honestly, we're just not really able to point in any specific direction. We seem to be going a little north of east which is backwards. Um, it's not horribly hot. I did put up the sunshade uh, in the cockpit, but mostly it's just rolly. Um, and the wind isn't really forecast to come back until tomorrow night. So it, it could be about 36 hours of this. We did get a really good night of sleep last night. Um, <laughs> After four, I was up almost the whole night because um, it was weird and squally and I kept hoping we'd get some wind. And then I finally went to bed at four and um, just turned off all my alarms because why bother? Slept until 10 <laughs> and now I'm up um, because it's hot down below. Um, so, probably be in the cockpit all day, might go swimming later. This marker down when I woke up at 10 just out of curiosity's sake to see what ends up happening with us throughout the day um, where we end up drifting. Still have about 460 miles to go to get to New Zealand. This was our route. Um, I was going to keep heading south and east because the wind's supposed to fill in from the southeast. Just kind of like this which would make this a really nice tack to New Zealand but as it is now going to be a bit more of a stretch to be able to make it in on one pack, but we'll see. Anyone would be good at this point. <laughs> There's something in the water. I think we're definitely going backwards because we're getting closer to the thing behind us. What is it? <laughs> this is what I do now. I sit on my boat and I stare at Flotsam. Check it out. Crab. Crab holding on to... Oh, it's trying to get to my boat. There it goes. Hello, friend. Yes, come join the geck. We're not going anywhere, but I guess it's bigger to hold on to than that piece of seaweed. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Come on, buddy, you can do it. You can do it. Ah, uh -huh. he's got the rope. Nope, he doesn't have the rope. This is the real test. Can a crab swim faster than my boat? Here, boy. Here, boy giving up. He turned around and he's swimming the other way now. I guess we are moving forward after all. I am sailing faster than a crab can swim. And a one inch crab can swim. So that is something.
build. Uh, Gecko is there. I'm here with the safety snake. Not a lot of wind today. Um, we're going about, uh, I don't know, 0.3 knots in whatever direction the wind blows us. And that's pretty much it. Tough life. Swim call. Swimming with the pilot fish around the boat and uh, trying just trying to not go crazy by having fun. <laughs> just kind of the story of life in general. <laughs> I mean, okay, so some people talk about sailing, passage making, just being about the destination, but there's moments that you miss if you have an engine or a fast boat like this, just swimming <laughs> in 13,000 feet of water in the Pacific <laughs> Ocean. We so saw a fin point. yesterday. We saw a huge yesterday and Eric would tell about it. But <laughs> Tika thought we were going to New Zealand. <laughs> Little did I know we were going to New Sea Land. <laughs> yes. We put the snake in the water, new land. <laughs> Here we are. I hope you like it. This is our home now. This is where we live. <laughs> Delicious. Yeah, poke bowls are great. Yeah. It is now 3.30 in the afternoon and we have gone 4.7 miles since 10 o'clock this morning. 11, 12, five and a half hours. It's about a knot, actually less, <laughs> that we've averaged. Yeah. Ooh, that's me. Hello. I'm wearing a towel. <laughs> the wind's picking up a little bit. Uh, it's weird because it feels like no matter what I do with the wind vane or the sails, we're always aiming about 60 degrees, so I'm thinking there's got to be some sort of current or something um, influencing us. But honestly, I don't really mind heading east. When the wind comes back, it's going to come back from the southeast. So the further east I can get, the better, because I'm sort of going basically due south. So I'm okay going due east a bit just to try to get some of those miles eaten of the Eastings so that when I, yeah, tacking down to New Zealand after spending about five days with not enough wind would really suck. Probably what we're gonna have to end up doing. But ideally, not. <laughs> ideally, none of this would have happened. <laughs> yes, it's a hard knock life. Rough passage, super intense. <laughs> Maybe if you throw some tuna in the water, it'll come. Here, yeah, fishy, fishy. I hope you like fish. <laughs> <laughs> Feels like there's something wrong about that. Ooh, 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 behind us. Where? It was. It came up? Yeah, it came up. There it is. There it is. I don't Oh no! What is it? It has. Is it a shark? Oh, I want to jump in the water. Whoa. Oh, Just another sunsetty evening with no wind. This time we've hacked it. Just take all the sails down and then they can't make noise. Well, they make less noise. Still came. The sail tape is totally coming off that repair. It seems like the repair is still holding. It's actually a pretty good testament to the repair. Yeah. It's holding up through this. It's true. Pretty bad testament to the sail tape. This is uh, just us ringing in no wind, November. <laughs> oh, yes. Thank you. That's the theme of this week's episode. <laughs> just kidding. Oh, wow. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> we get hit by a real doozy of a wave. And everything that you have anywhere becomes lower. <laughs> and even the stuff that's all the way down rolls around. Wow.
I simply remember my favorite things, and then I don't feel so bad. <laughs> Oh no, our teeth! Oh no! Oh no! Oh. Take it down! <laughs> it's so sad! <laughs> so sad. <laughs> oh, no. oh, no. <laughs> Just stop our teeth! <laughs> Wait, can I have some of yours? Cheers, <laughs> mate! <clears throat> In the doldrums, the mighty doldrums, the sails they log all night! <laughs> In the doldrums, the mighty doldrums, the sails they flog all night. Flop, flap, 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 flap. And the name of our album is called Two Whole Cups of Garbage. Yeah. <laughs> I need to get the suction cups for dog feet <laughs> on the bottom of my cup. Today we invented, if you had a dog on a boat, I said he could put suction cups on his feet so he didn't slide around. Or move anywhere. And then Tika pointed out that he would just be stuck <laughs> in one place. <laughs> yeah, you know what this is? This is the best sunset we've had all day. The best sunset all day, man. Best part of my sunset, watching it go down. <laughs> hey, have you seen my covers? <laughs> it's red. <laughs> Actually, we're going in the right direction, bro. <laughs> First time all day. <laughs> you know what they say. One fitty, more like two dollars. <laughs> Day eight, we had a really light wind night all night long. Um, both slept really well. And then around seven o'clock this morning, Tiga got up to check and uh, the wind came back. So we now have a double reefed main and a working headsail, working jib. Um, the wind is really, I mean, it's squally gusty, so it's all over the place. One minute we're overpowered, the next minute we're underpowered. Um, the sail tape wasn't doing a very good job of sticking on my repair, so I replaced it with some duct tape, which honestly is way better sticking power. And <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, it looks really cool. We're both sort of enamored with the sail now. Okay, we have wind again, and it is wind with a vengeance. It's probably blowing 25 to 30 right now. Um, it's been so up and down, I can't tell you the number of times today I've put the reef in and out of the main, but right now I'm sailing with a double reefed main and a working jib, rail in the water. Um, there must be some sort of a west going current, or west to east current, because um, I should be going almost due south, and instead I'm going almost due west, which is very frustrating because New Zealand is south. <laughs> west is Australia. It's not where I want to go this season. So, uh, close hauled, and it's probably going to be close hauled for the rest of the trip, which is hopefully not more than 500 miles. It's been 500 miles for the past three days because of being becalmed for two days, and then the course continually changing for the worse as the wind gets worse. Um, yeah, pretty snotty out here, but at least we're moving. Uh, I'm rocking the two raincoats look because my fall weather jacket leaks even though I nick waxed it, so I just put my raincoat on top of it, but I really love the hood and the muffler of the Fowley jacket, so that's why I have it on underneath. 
uh, rain pants. It's pretty cold out here. So yeah, just uh, getting a little bit of everything the past couple of days. It's crazy to think that yesterday I was um, swimming in an inflatable snake behind my boat getting a sunburn and today I'm in full foul weather gear in the cockpit in almost 30 knots of wind just getting the snot beaten out of myself. Uh, times how they change. And well, <laughs> here we are. It's blowing about 25 to 30 outside, reefed down, rainy, disgusting. Uh, I even turned on my AIS alarm because it's just such bad visibility. And Tika and I are double bunking it. What? What? And yeah, we have some treats. Mm. We have chocolate and coffee candies. Oh my. And we just ate some particle board. <laughs> oh yeah. That's what we call it. Not sure what it is in real life. <laughs> but anyway, that's what's going on down here. Just kind of hiding from the elements, pretending that the outside world doesn't exist. He was telling me about her ideal spa space to be living right now, which is what? In a hut, uh, in a forest. <laughs> in a <laughs> in desert. The of the woods. <laughs> on a mountain. On a mountain. In the middle of a continent. <laughs> Somewhere that's not here. <laughs> Clearly. I got the message loud and clear. <laughs> oh, you don't like being on a 27 foot boat and 30 knots of wind close hauled in a storm? <laughs> Funny that. Most people don't. <laughs> Welcome to my world. <laughs> so there's a sound. Wait for it. There. Wait for it. There. And Tiga and I are trying to predict if we can make the sound at the same time the sound makes the sound. So we're just lying here. Da da da. Ooh, that, that was, was really close. close. That one. Da da da. Da da da. da, da, da. <gasps> you have to close your eyes. Become one with a da da. Da da da. da. <laughs> And that's what we've been doing. <laughs> Happy Squall Day! <laughs> Speed around, Tegan, name the potatoes. Um, Charles, Murphy, Valentino, uh, XY Boy, Clarkson, and Shimla Blokizno. <laughs> <laughs> this is like being on a road trip that never ends. <laughs> in a car with the worst shocks <laughs> you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> yeah. Da, da, da. <laughs> and the scenery just doesn't really change. The scenery is always the same. It must be what Kansas is like. <laughs> Hello everyone in Kansas. <laughs> I hear your state is beautiful <laughs> and full of ocean. <laughs> <laughs> when they said a sea of corn, no, they meant I didn't it literally. <laughs> weather has continued all night and into today it's just cloudy with squalls rolling through and um, what I ultimately decided to do last night was to keep the double reef in the main and the working jib even though sometimes Gek was a little bit underpowered just so that during the day Tiga and I were constantly taking reefs in and out to try to maintain five knots um, but I thought you know what it's cold it's wet this is exhausting. <laughs> There's no reason um, for us to be doing this all night too. So I just reefed the boat down and we both had a really good night of sleep. Obviously still waking up for watches, but we didn't have to go out on deck for anything. minefield down here with the boat healing over so much and one of the hardest things is pouring liquids. Oh. Yeah. Spray. <laughs> um, tip one, 
Put the cups in the sink because you are going to spill. Tip two, <laughs> do not put your hand anywhere near the cups because you are going to spill boiling water. Here we go. Tip three, do not fill the cups to the top because it will just spill out because you can only have as much liquid as the tip allows for the cup. This is my lighter that I'm using right now. Sailing, everything is going smoothly. <laughs> because it is. At the end of the day, the wind's kind of uh, mellowed out a little bit, so I shook one of the reefs out of the main. Now it's just a single reef to main working jib. Um, we are on the compass heading to 10, but real life heading about 240. Uh, <laughs> something out. It's really tricky coming out <laughs> of here <laughs> with the little shield in place, but we do get waves in the cockpit, as you can see from the wetness of the cockpit and also to you. <laughs> <laughs> Tiga took a wave. So we're just uh, rugged up and enjoying the amount of outsidingness that we can achieve <laughs> from the day. Words failing me. <laughs> How do I talk, robot brain? It's cool getting further south. These sunsets are way longer than when you're right on the equator the sun kind of sets and then it's over and then um, when you're in the higher latitudes of course you get the really nice long extended sunsets so it started happening a couple days ago and I was just in awe of this extended version sunset which is just so beautiful so now every evening it seems like the sunsets are getting longer and there's more daylight which I wouldn't necessarily know because I have spent a lot of time sleeping <laughs> Our track line is crazy. Um, it's definitely a zigzag. I mean, we're definitely headwind Z trying to go south, but not able to right now. So we are just cutting across to Three Kings Ridge. Yeah, Three Kings Ridge. Yeah, thought we didn't want to see it as we were heading <laughs> east, but then we decided, you know what? We're probably only going to be here once. While we're in the neighborhood. <laughs> Might as well just turn Check and out. go 300 <laughs> miles to the west to the Three Kings Ridge. So that's what we're currently on our way to see. How far down below the surface did you say it was? <laughs> 6,000 feet. 6,000 feet. Approximately. That is 7,000 feet less than the average current depth. So kind of cool. Also, who were the Three Kings? Why did they get a ridge named after them? Uh, we will find out, and I will be creating a trip advisor for it. <laughs> Not ten. <laughs> I don't know. Um, ten or eleven, I think. Yeah, ten. Uh, so we are definitely in the southern hemisphere now. Um, it's cold. Tegan and I both slept in long underwear and long sleeve shirts last night. Uh, but unfortunately, as humans, we need to shower and the shower situation is getting dire. It is not warm outside. I sat outside this morning. I had a jacket on over this silk long underwear top with a long sleeve shirt and leggings. Anyway, this is a long way of saying I need to take a shower. Uh, so it's still outside in about 20 knots of wind and with cold water and it's just gonna be something that I have to power through. Tika's gonna join me in this endeavor. Uh, the first challenge, of course, is just getting it set up, uh, getting everything out of the laz, getting the water into the bucket, and we have two reefs in the main and a working jib, if that gives you any idea of how rough it is. Uh, and this is our life now. sucked the first couple of cups and then afterwards it was very invigorating and intense. <laughs> yeah, Tika's taking hers. <laughs> 
Yeah, but it feels so good to be clean. I woke up this morning and I just felt disgusting. <laughs> Chica's having slightly more trouble with hers than I did, I think. But I was telling her, everyone says they get to New Zealand and it's all cold and they're wearing a lot of clothes, but they didn't take two weeks to get to New Zealand. And also, they probably did not take bucket showers in the cockpit in 20 knots of wind. <laughs> and we just hit 30 degrees south, so we are just acclimating ourselves so we could show up rocking it in bikinis. But like, yeah, what up? Up. <laughs> this is the extreme passage. In other news, my coconut oil has gone solid. That's so sad. How am I supposed to get it out? <coughs> God, I'm getting sick already. <coughs> Exit interview. Totally worth it. Um, I feel amazing. Our whole boat smells like shampoo now inside. Yesterday it smelled like pizza because I made us some pasta with garlic and tomato sauce. Um, now it smells like shampoo, so you never know what you're gonna get. Hey guys, so this is the exciting interview with my mom. The everyone who submitted questions. There were a lot of good ones and there were a lot of sort of similar ones. So I've sort of combined all the similar questions together and um, I'm gonna ask them all to my mom. So each one of your little questions shall be answered. Uh, here we go. How concerned were you with both daughters on the vessel with no working engine? Hmm, well, the the working engine part didn't really bother me much because when um, we circumnavigated as a family, we just had a six horse outboard that we stowed in the stern locker of our boat. So um, Holly and Tiga are on a sailboat and I am really, really confident about Holly's ability and Tiga's ability to sail together as a team. So I was not worried about the engine at all. Was the transition from boat life to land life challenging with three kids who grew up on the water? It was a little bit, um, but you know, when you go from country to country, there's always, things are always different and you get used to them. How did you manage anxiety with young kids on deck during passages? I never had anxiety with young kids on deck during passages and I think it's because um, our kids were born uh, on the boat and to the boat and so I didn't really know what it was like to have little kids not on a boat. So that was normal. Um, having kids on the boat on deck was really normal for us. We used harnesses um, when they were on, up on deck and so I always had the other end of the line either in my hand or tied to the boat. Kids are funny, they hold on no matter what, so um, they never fell over, ever. What were some of your favorite books to read while on passage? Did you instill love of books to Holly? I would hope, I, I think I did instill love of books um, to all three of the kids, and I know that one of Holly's joys is reading, and I think it still is. Uh, Holly learned to read when she was very, very young. She was four years old. She was very fluent, read all of the Little House on the Prairie books. They, they were a big hit. Um, I love Roald Dahl. I love poetry. So Double A Milne, his, not just the Winnie the Pooh, but his Now We Are Very Young, uh, Now We Are Six and When We Were Very Young poems are, they were huge. How did you meet Holly's dad and who was the one who had the idea first about sailing around the world as a family? Uh, good question. So neither of us ever had the idea of sailing around the world as a family. That just happened. Um, Dave wanted to sail around the world ever since he was a kid. He read the book called Dove and that really inspired him and he took off from Seattle as a young man actually with his father they had their um, his childhood sailboat and they went off together um, sailed from Seattle through uh, Panama up the east coast of the United States and then I met Dave in Keneal Bay which is on St. John Island in the Virgin Islands and we were both employees working as beach hut attendants which um, was a really great job. We gave out snorkeling gear and taught windsurf lessons and played around with the motorboat. Um, that was great. We had great fun. And uh, in the end, we got together and we started sailing together. And then our children just come along. Um, if you are 25 years old and you're living together with your husband or your boyfriend on a 25-foot boat, the thing that happens to you is three kids. So uh, they just came along the way and then we didn't want to stop, so we kept sailing. Were each of your kids born where you were sailing and living aboard at the time? Yes, 
So basically I went through the Pacific pregnant. He was conceived in Gatun Lake, which is halfway through the Panama Canal. And he was born in Australia. And then Holly was born in New Zealand, a very planned baby. And Tiga was born on the boat in North Carolina. So yeah, all during cruising times. I was lucky enough to see your slideshow a few years ago and I was wondering if these visits to Holly inspire you to get back cruising the world again. They are very inspirational. I love visiting Holly all over the world. And it is, you know, uh, cruising is an amazing, amazing life experience. Um, just being self-sufficient and you have to have, um, you have to be, you have to know what you want to do and be really strong and re totally rely on yourself and the people that you're with. So that's one of the reasons I admire Holly so much because she's all by herself and really strong. You have to be physically and emotionally strong to solo on your boat all by yourself. When I was out with Dave, we had the two of us, and I think when you're a couple, you draw strength from each other. Uh, talk about provisioning on the Cal 25 and what was a favorite staple food. Uh, favorite staple food, potatoes, onions, and cabbage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when we had apples, whoa, that was awesome. Yeah, I made a lot of our bread, so we had flour, sugar, all those staples. And then canned goods, um, canned goods and dried fruit, that kind of stuff. Um, okay, people are wanting to know embarrassing stories and young Holly stories that you might uh, have for the world. <laughs> <laughs> So there was a really interesting time when we were clearing in to uh, one of the Caribbean islands and um, I brought Holly and Tiga and da oftentimes Dave would just go in by himself and well, this time I sat Holly up on the counter. She, this is three-year-old, barely three-year-old Holly and we were um, gave all our paperwork over and there was a, a very um, short and square looking um, customs officer on the other side of the counter and he had no sense of humor at all and Holly was being cute little Holly babbling away and you know of course I think she's adorable so I was laughing and smiling and and Dave was trying to get the paperwork done and he was ignoring her and all of a sudden he she points at him with her hand like this and her fingers like two inches from his head and she goes mommy that man has no hair and uh, he was so mad instead of laughing he got so mad and okay so this happened um when like like i said every every um moment was a learning experience and we were learning about sea creatures and we were learning about fish and fins and octopus and tentacles and squid and um all the different parts that that all these sea creatures have and it was one day when we were walking down the beach and we actually came across a squid and we were looking at it and Holly was super excited never fearful of picking up a dried smelly squid with little flies all over it and and me too you brushed it off and it was a chance to learn I love that and she was identifying all the parts of the squid and so she pointed to the bottom of where all the little tentacles were and I was excited to hear her telling me all the pieces and then she said here's the head and this and that and and here are the big testicles <laughs> do you have any advice for people who want to set off maybe they want to have their own boat or adventure or dream that's a little bit not of the ordinary yeah so one thing I would say is just go for it um, don't be daunted um, take it one step at a time have a, have a pretty fixed date of when you want to leave and then try to stick to your date. It doesn't matter really if you do or not, but try to stick to your date so that it doesn't become elusive and, and just keep being finger length away in the future. Um, don't, when people have, tell you why you can't do something, don't listen to them. <laughs> Especially if you have kids, a lot of people are going to tell you, you can't do that because, and then there's a million reasons why, and there are, but just don't listen to that. Just stick to your heart and stick to your, what you know you can do, because if you have a dream and you want to go out 
and live that dream or live that adventure, that's all you need. You need that motivation and that inner strength to do it. And you'll do it. You will do it. So, yeah. Believe in yourself. Okay, that's all for this week. Thank you guys for watching. I put up new videos on YouTube every two weeks. And for my patrons, you guys get a snack on the weeks that I don't put out full-length YouTube video. I am currently editing this video in Auckland. My mom just left a couple days ago and I am deep into some boat projects to get my boat ready to sail back up to the islands in May, which is very exciting. Um, thank you guys for all of your comments. I do love reading them. They make me very happy. Uh, thank you to my patrons for supporting me and making everything that I do possible. If you'd like to become a patron, my Patreon is patreon.com slash windhippie. For one-time donations, I have a PayPal, paypal.me slash windhippie. I also have merchandise. I have a new design out and I have baseball caps, which has been a highly requested item of clothing. So those are all up. Check out the new designs. They're pretty sweet. And uh, thank you, Tish, for... She kind of reminds me when I need to do another edit, and I edit them on my boat and upload the edit to Dropbox, and then she puts them on YouTube for me and schedules that. So that's pretty cool. It's like <laughs> having a mom, except she's my sister-in-law. All right, that's all for this week. I'll see you guys next week. Patrons and YouTubers, I'll see you in two weeks with another full-length episode.